More than a year ago, Amazon launched Fargate for EKS, using which you can spin up serverless containers within a Kubernetes ecosystem. If you are wondering about what is this serverless within Kubernetes, Amazon has a service called Fargate, using which you can spin up serverless containers within Amazon ECS. Earlier, it used to only provide serverless containers for ECS, but now recently, Amazon said you don't have to run any EC2 instances as your data plane within Kubernetes, and you can leverage Fargate to spin up serverless containers within the Kubernetes ecosystem. This really means that you don't have to use something like Knative, which is an open source product for running up serverless compute within Kubernetes. Using Fargate within AWS, you can spin up serverless containers, leveraging the same powerful features of Kubernetes with minimal overhead. So what does it really mean? So how does the architecture look like? So if you look at the blog post which was done as a part of the Fargate launch, this is how a typical EKS instance looks like. So in my previous videos on EKS with Istio, we had created some EC2 instances or nodes where we had been running our pods, right? So this is how it looks like. So Amazon EKS is basically a control plane which is managed by Amazon. So EC2 instances will be running within Amazon's account and we have our worker nodes or the data plane which will be running within our accounts. And this is how the traditional EKS setup was done and everybody was using it. So that way you pay only for the data planes and also you pay very little amount for your control plane. However, with Fargate, you don't even have to run your worker nodes or your data plane. So how is it even possible? So can we have zero EC2 instance and schedule pods within a Kubernetes ecosystem? It is possible with Fargate. So in this video, we are going to look at how to leverage Fargate to schedule serverless containers within EKS. Let's get started. Press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss any update from Tech Primers. In order to provision a Fargate cluster, I'm going to leverage the EKS CTL command. So I'm going to say EKS CTL create cluster. In my earlier videos on EKS, you would have noticed that I used to mention the number of nodes which we want to have within a cluster. Here, I'm going to mention only Fargate. So I'm mentioning my cluster name as TP cluster and the region as US East 1 and I'm mentioning Fargate as my cluster option. So what happens behind the scenes is Amazon creates a control plane. So the control plane is basically the server side component or the master components within a Kubernetes deployment. And those all will be running within Amazon accounts. And in addition to that, they will be having some backup nodes which will be spinned up for our data plane capabilities. So if I schedule some new pods, then Amazon will be automatically spinning up EC2 instances in the back of their own accounts and, and we will be charged only for the amount of compute which we are leveraging and running within the whole Fargate ecosystem. So this essentially saves a lot of money in terms of how you provision EKS clusters and how you used to schedule pods and then delete pods. So I do have my EKS cluster configuration open. So let me refresh this page. Right now there are no clusters if you notice. Uh, and our cluster is getting created. So the cluster which we triggered, the TP hyphen cluster is now getting created. And if I go to the EC2 instances console, I don't see any EC2 instance right now. In a general EKS cluster, you will see the data planes which gets created as a part of the EKS CTL command, as a part of the cluster creation, because your data planes are going to be present inside EC2 instance within your own account. But in case of Fargate, we don't even have any EC2 instances which we'll be having. So all the pods, whatever we schedule within the Kubernetes deployment, all those will be spinned up and run within the Amazon infrastructure. This is a huge win for us because we don't have to pay for all the EC2 instances. Instead, we pay only for the pods and their compute usages. And Amazon does auto scaling in terms of scaling more nodes or reducing the nodes. Let's wait for the cluster to get created. Usually the cluster creation takes around 10 to 15 minutes. So let's wait for that. One eternity later. Finally, the cluster got created in around 15 minutes. So let's go and see what is present in the server. 
So let's do kubectl get nodes. So kubectl get nodes usually will return the nodes, how many of our nodes we have within the cluster. So within Fargate, if you look at it, the nodes are named as Fargate, whatever IP address, but I don't see these within my EC2 instance. So if I see, uh, there are no nodes within this particular terminal. So this signifies that these are all serverless nodes. So we don't have these nodes, but these nodes are present inside the AWS infrastructure and we will be leveraging those to spin up our own pods within these nodes. If I do kubectl get pod, I can see, if I let's say hyphen all namespace, I can see that there are core DNS servers which is running within the cube system namespace, which is all running within these nodes here. So let me clear these and I'll do a kubectl get pod all namespace and then hyphen do w this is going to be a watch command and i'm going to spin up a new terminal where i'm going to create some pods so let's do a pod creation so i'm going to create kubectl create deployment so or maybe i can do pod as well so but i'll create deployment and i'll just mention my deployment name as nginx so i'm just creating an nginx image this will create a bare minimal nginx image within a pod and we should be able to access it on the port 80. So by default, Nginx is running on port 80 and that is what will be deployed within our pod here. So let me create a deployment called Nginx and you can see that immediately there is a um, pod which is getting scheduled. Now if you notice, it is still not getting ready. It has been scheduled, but it's not ready. This is because Amazon is provisioning the infrastructure. So let me uh, split this into a separate and then let's do kubectl get nodes. So if you look at the get nodes, there are two nodes right now, but there will be a third node which will be created and on those nodes, our pods will be scheduled. Right now, I just created a deployment. Now, I'm just waiting on my nodes to be provisioned. Usually, the node provision is much faster, but uh, since I'm using it in the US East 1, which is one of the most busiest region within Amazon, so it's taking a while. So notice that uh, while I'm talking, it's already... Uh, provision some things and see this right there was a node which got provision and it was initially not ready and then now it has become ready and the moment it became ready our containers started getting created so see here one of our nginx container now is running now i'm going to schedule more containers right just to see how it is right so i'm going to create nginx 2 i'll create nginx 3 nginx 4 i mean just for uh, creating some artificial traffic for creating multiple pods within the cluster so i'm just going to create three different pods so all these will be again pending you see that all these are now pending once the auto scaler within the fargate cluster picks these pending pods then it will be scheduling them on the corresponding nodes if the node already has enough memory it will be scheduling them on the same node if not it will be scheduling in a different node so we will be getting more nodes we will be adding so Fargate will automatically add more nodes and then all these pods will be scheduled on those nodes. So let me clear this and I'll do a kubectl get pod. So you can see there are four different Nginx pods out of which only one is running because that was the one which we uh, initially provisioned. Now you can see that there, is, there are more nodes which are getting provisioned because we have more uh, pods. So there are more nodes which are getting provisioned in the back end and we also have now we also have the pods getting created so we i can see that there is a container getting created all these are happening so let me uh, clear this and then refresh again so see that more containers are getting created because i have more nodes which were added so let me do a clear again and i will do a fresh get pod so except for one pod all the others are now running Right. That also, I believe, is now getting created. So let me refresh this again. Yep. So all my pods are running within the default namespace. That is where I created my Nginx um, pods. Now, just to validate what's happening, right? If I go to my EC2 console, I can see there is nothing. And let me come back here and I will clear this window and just say kubectl get nodes now let's see how many nodes are present so initially we had only two nodes now i think we have one two three four five six nodes 
right so i'm pretty sure all these nodes are very small that's why there are six nodes and we have four containers and then we have also the core dns which is running i'm also now going to expose a service so let me clear this i'll expose the service because right now i just uh, don't have a way to connect from one part to another right i'm just going to create a new service uh, which is going to be of type node port and since nginx runs on 80 i'm going to map the same to 80 right so i'll be running my service on 80 so i can just do a kubectl get service and i can see it should be of type node port so this is the node port type right so i can now log into a um, pod and from that pod i can connect to the nginx so i'm going to do a kubectl exec to just show you how you can access by logging into the uh, pod and then just doing it to local host so i'm just going to connect to the nginx pod and directly run the local host from there so i'm just doing a, a exec and then you can see that i'm just getting the pod name here and i'm doing a curl so this should return me the page if it had been present so this will log into the container and you can see that there is uh, there is some html page which got returned right it says welcome to nginx so that basically says my pod has nginx running within it so if you notice what fargate has helped us is it did not provision ec2 instances we were able to easily spin up pods and fargate was able to auto scale based on the demand or the number of pods which were provisioned within the cluster this is where i see the potential of using fargate for most of our use cases where all the containers are running as a serverless option and you pay only for the pods and the memory whatever you use within the cluster if you're already using fargate in your space do let me know in the comment section below i hope you were able to understand what is fargate and how you can leverage Fargate on EKS and create serverless containers within Kubernetes. As always, if you like the video, go ahead and like it. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to it. Meet you again in the next video. Thank you very much.